Hi there and welcome back. We've got our web page open on to the 12 Caesars page and before we start adding some more tags I want to talk about the most important tag that you probably find in HTML and that's the use of the anchor tag to create hyperlinks. If you look at the 12 Caesars page you've noticed that there's this list of names and we'll get back to that list in just a few minutes but one of these names is highlighted as in it's uh, blue and underlined. So we know that it's a hyperlink and if I move my mouse over it then my mouse pointer changes shape and I can click on it to open the next page. If you look at down in the status bar, then you'll see that the status bar says that it's going to try and open a page called claudius.html from my HTML1 folder in my CP102 folder. Now if you're following along on your home computers, or uh, then you might be using the D drive, but if you're at work or if you're at school, then you'll probably be seeing this information stored on your home directories. If I click on this link now, you'll see it can't find it because I don't have a, fa a page called claudius.html sitting in my home directory. So it says Internet Explorer cannot display the page. It's because it can't be found. It doesn't exist. It's not there. So I'm going to go back and you can see that we're back on our ordinary page. The hyperlink has now changed purple because I've been there to that page before. And we're going to actually create this Claudius page so that we can have a web page made up of our website made up of two pages. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back to my Word document that contained the caesars.doc file. And uh, you probably have this open on your computer still, or just open it up. And remember that we copied this tag, these tags for page one, or for the menu.html document. And on the second page, in the middle of the second page, is the second document. And I'm going to copy these tags. Again, they're in uppercase to make them easier to read. But when you write yours, you should use lowercase tags copy all this text to the Windows clipboard, and then move into PSPAD. I'm in PSPAD, and I can open a new file, make sure it's an HTML file, hit OK, delete the tags that are there, and then I can paste in the document that I've just copied. Now when you're making your own web page, you won't have to delete those other tags. You can in fact use that template as a starting point for making your own web pages. But I highly recommend that you memorize the structure, the basic structure of a page that has the HTML tag, the body tag, the head tag, and the title tag. Everything in there is required for a proper web page and everything else can just be added inside the body tag. So I have this page here called, uh, and I'm going to call it Claudius. So let's hit uh, File Save, and it will save as, which is our new file called Claudius, C-L-A-U-D-I-U-S, Dot HTML and it's in the same file, it's, sorry, it's in the same folder as our menu.html page, that's our HTML1 folder on our home directory. So click Save, and now this page has been saved to the hard drive. So I'm going to go back into my web browser and open up the 12 Caesars page. Now of course I didn't make any changes to the 12 Caesars page recently, so I don't have to refresh it. In fact, this hyperlink to Claudius, which didn't work the last time, is now going to work fine, since the page it's loaded from the hard drive into the web browser. I now see that I have slightly smaller headings. These are the heading two, uh, the H2 tags. Different paragraph talking about uh, Caligula and about uh, Claudius, how Claudius was poisoned. There's a link here that goes back to the main menu, so I can click on it, and it brings us back to the 12 Caesars page, and I click on Claudius, and it brings us back to the uh, Claudius page. Now here's a little secret technique that I wanted to show you earlier that I had forgotten. If you visit any web page, you can see the web page or HTML tags that made up that web page. That you, you can see all the HTML by clicking on the View menu. And if you're in Internet Explorer, you can choose Source. Or if you're in Firefox, you click on the View menu and, and click View Source. Or if you're in Safari, there's also a View menu. And you can still get the Source page of this document. Now, in older docu in older versions of Internet Explorer, this would automatically open a Notepad file. And now it doesn't open Notepad file. I can't op make any of these changes, but you can see that the tags that made up this page are color highlighted, and it allows us to very clearly see what the HTML tags were that made up this page. So I can close this because I can't make any changes to it. But if I switch back to uh, Claudius html in my ps pad i see the same kind of tags because it's the same document and of course i have my word wrap turned on here as well as i did in the previous page or in when we edited menu.html i'm actually going to close the claudius page from my 
PS pad, so I can click on the close button in the top right hand corner. Make sure you don't click the big red X that will exit the program, but I can close the document by clicking on the close button and I still have my menu.html page opened up and we can make changes to it later. Now let's just take a little look, a clear look at the tag that we use to make the hyperlink appear in our Claudius page. So first I'll cover this uh, ordered, this unordered list tag. On our web page, we see, well, if we go back to the main menu, we can see that the list of Caesars are listed here with little bullets beside them. That's a bulleted list or an HTML, it's called an unordered list. So I'll go into my text editor and I am actually going to make my text editor side by side with my web browser. It's kind of a neat feature we can do here in Windows 7 so that I can make some changes and uh, have them visible at the same time as I change my web browser. So I've got this link here, call, uh, the tag called the unordered list. And there's actually an ordered list tag. So this, of course, when I click on it, it highlights it in PSPAD. So you can see the UL that starts the tag and down at the bottom, the at the bottom of the list is the unordered list tag, the closing tag. So I'm gonna change this to an ordered list. And if I change this from an unordered list to an ordered list, it becomes OL for ordered list. And you can see that that tag that was highlighted in cyan is now highlighted in red because there's no closing tag. So I just simply have to change the closing tag to be O, O, L. So I've changed the O, the U, L to an O, L. So now I have an unordered, an ordered list where I used to have an unordered list. So I'm going to hit control S to save that to my home directory. And then I move over to my web browser. And of course I hit the refresh button or press F5. And I automatically get the numbers in this list from one to 12. So now I have an ordered list of all the Caesars of Rome. If I look back in PSPAD, each of these items is a list item. So that's what the LI stands for. So some people sometimes think it's a number one, but it's actually LI for list item. Remember that HTML tags are very easy to memorize because of the way they're named after what they're actually called. At the very end of this list, I'm going to make a new line and it puts a new line under Domitian, which is the last Caesar listed there. And I'm going to put a new LI and I'm going to put it in uh, in lowercase. I'm going to put my name so you can put your name there. And I actually can even close this off with a closing li tag even though it's not actually required. So you can see that earlier on the other list items don't have a closing tag. But I can definitely put one in. Now if I save my file again and I go back to my web browser and press F5 to refresh then I appear as the 13th Caesar of Rome. Woohoo! Now, if I look at another tag that I want to pay particular attention to, this link that I have on list item 5 happens to be a tag called the anchor tag. Now, the A for anchor has an attribute, and this attribute is called the href attribute, and href stands for horizontal reference. So we just have to remember that A href is always the name of the anchor and then a space, and then href is the attribute. So this attribute is, has a value of claudius.html. So when I click on the link, the word claudius, then it will try and open the claudius.html page. So this first half here within the angle brackets, a space href equals quotation mark, claudius.html quotation mark, and then the ending angle bracket, that's all the starting anchor tag. Now in between the starting anchor tag and the ending anchor tag, is any text that I want to appear as a hyperlink. So I have the word Claudius here, so the word Claudius will be underlined and appear in blue in a standard web page. So here I've got a little slide that just talks about this in a little more detail. I have my anchor tag and its attribute, the href, and its value, claudius.html. So in general, pretty much all tags have this format. And as we move along in HTML, we'll see more tags that have attributes with different values. So we have the tag, that's, which is the name of the tag usually, so A for anchor, B for bold, body for the body tag, and that will have sometimes an attribute. So the attribute will have a value, so it always says attribute equals, and then the value is always in quotations. Then we have some text or some sort of object that we want to have become our, hyper, our hyperlink. If you want to put an image in between two anchor tags, that'll be, that image will become a hyperregion or a hyperlink. 
that will take you to whatever page you've specified. So we, in general, all tags have an attribute with some values. We have the text in between the tags usually, and then we have the closing tag. So there are actually three ways to use the anchor tag. First, I'm going to use it to link to a page. So in this case, we've linked to a page called claudius.html, which is in the same folder as the page that we created. I could also use it to link to an email address. So here we still use the anchor tag with the href attribute, but the value of the attribute changes. Now we have the word mail to, which indicates that we're going to use the mail to protocol to send a request for an email address, or it's actually going to start your default mail client on your computer, which if you're at home is probably Outlook Express or Outlook. But if you're in the computer labs on campus, it's probably going to try to open groupwise. And your computer might not be configured to properly use groupwise, but we'll see that as we continue the work. So you have mail to colon and then your email address. So there's no space between the words mail to and the colon and your email address. So that's exactly the way it's going to look. That's this beginning anchor tag for an email address. And then we have whatever link you want to have. So email me or include your email address there. Whatever link you want to have people click on in order to send you an email address. Try not to use the words click here. It's very unprofessional. At the very end of that, we have our closing anchor tag. So we have our starting anchor tag in the middle, or the starting anchor tag with our attribute, and then we have our closing, uh, closing anchor tag at the very end. The last thing we can look at is how to link to an external website. So here we have the same thing. We've got the anchor tag with the href attribute, and again, the value changes. So here we have HTTP colon instead of mail to colon. And again, this specifies the protocol that we're going to use to um, have our web request made. And this is going to try and open a website called www.wlu.ca. Then we have the words Go Hawks, so that'll be our hyperlink. And then we close the angle bracket, uh, we close the anchor tag. So let's see how we can put these into use. So we have our HTML tags, we have our link, we have uh, the other pages that we've the other page that we've created. So let's take a look at that other use of the anchor tag. I have my name here, I'm going to turn my name into a link to my email address. So I'm going to include the starting angle bracket, and that's the anchor tag, with the href equals quotation marks, and I need to include the mail to colon, that will specify the protocol that it uses to make this link, and I'm going to use my email address, which is rhenderson at wlu.ca. Closing the quotation marks and closing the angle brackets, I'm actually going to maximize my screen here so you can see it all. So I have the entire anchor tag, the starting anchor tag, and then after the word Rick, I can then close the anchor tag. And it closes the anchor tag for me. When I select it, I see the starting anchor and the ending anchor are highlighted so I can tell that everything looks right. And then after that, I have my closing list item tag, which just makes the rest of the link uh, look a little nicer here in the HTML view. So I can save this page, and I can go back to my web browser, and I can uh, maximize it, and I can press refresh. And now, the only change that's happened here is that Rick is now a hyperlink. So if I move my mouse over the word Rick, I can see an email address at the bottom in the status bar, and if I click on it, it'll try and open my default mail client. And I have no idea what it's trying to do. Well, it tries to open Outlook 2010, and I don't actually use 2010, so I'll just put an end to that right now. So there you go. Let's go back to PSPad. Now, the other thing I can do is I'm going to actually add a couple more tags here, and we're going to link to an external website. Now, one thing that I should have pointed out is that any information within the body of your document cannot go after the closing body tag. So anything I want to have appear on the on the page has to appear within the closing uh, within the body tag. So I have to move to after my unordered list, well, after my ordered list tag, and I'm going to start a new paragraph. Here's my paragraph tag, and I'm going to say uh, visit the Golden Hawks. And that's going to be some text that I'll have appear on the screen. Visit the Golden Hawks. Yay. So that's my full paragraph. Now I want this to be a link to the Laurier website. And in fact, I just want Golden Hawks to be a link to the Laurier website. So again, it's really a smart idea not to have things like click here to go to the Laurier website. What you can do is simply make your hyperlinks part of the sentence or part of a phrase, just like you see in Wikipedia. 
So I have an H uh, A, so I have my anchor tag, href equals, and I want to link to the HTTP, which stands for the Hypertext Protocol, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP colon slash slash www.wlu.ca quotation marks angle bracket. Now that starts the anchor, and I want the anchor to go all the way along to the word golden hawks, but not include the exclamation point because that'll look kind of silly. Put in a slash a, and that will end my anchor. So try to get used to what this will look like if you viewed it in a web browser. Realize that the word golden hawks will be a hyperlink underlined in blue. The words visit the and the exclamation point won't. So I hit Control S to save it. I'm going to switch into my web browser, the 12 Caesars, and I press F5 to refresh it. And now I get a new paragraph at the bottom of the screen. Now that's one of the benefits of the new paragraph is that I get a blank line. So if I didn't include the P tag, it would be listed right underneath number 13 there. So if I put my mouse over the Golden Hawks page, or the Golden Hawks link, then I can see in my status bar that it's going to go to the Laurier web page. And if I click on the link, it's going to open the Laurier website. And there it is. Everything looks great, so I can click back. And there's the rest of the page. And that shows you everything you need to know about hyperlinks. So make sure you remember that there are three ways to use the hyperlinks or the anchor tag. You can link to a page within your current website. You can link to an email address, and you can, of course, click and link to a, an external website of any kind. In the next video, we'll take a look at using images, creating tables, and how to use comments in HTML.